A sizable chunk of the history of video games has been filled with titles that don't really require to have your brain turned on. However, since the turn of the century, there have been more and more titles hitting the market that flat out refuse to let you play them absent-mindedly. So let's take a look at the real deep thinkers today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games that pose extremely deep questions. Number 10. Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy is frustration incarnate, but it is also pretty damn deep as well. The goal is simple, all you have to do is get to the top. Every so often a narration will post some half-hearted philosophical message almost in the tone of parody. Now it makes sense considering the character you play as is the Greek philosopher Diogenes, a man notorious for his self-indulgent antics. And speaking of Greek history, the player themselves effectively becomes the mythological figure that is cursed with the eternal task of rolling a boulder up a hill only for it to come right back down before reaching the peak. You'll find yourself wondering what the point of even trying to beat this game is. Do you believe that at some point things will change? Is this out of nothing more than spite? Have you found peace in the comfort of repetition? These are all questions that we actually face in real life. So often do we end up repeating the same actions expecting a different result only to find the metaphorical boulder rolling right back down the hill once more. We only ever tend to learn the pressures of the boulder when it ends up crushing us. Getting over it brings us face to face with this reality by doing exactly that, and that is crushing us. Number 9. Spider-Man for the PS4 at the end of 2018 Spider-Man, Peter Parker finds himself in a position that tests his very heart and soul. A deadly virus is spreading throughout the city, and there is only one sample of the cure. However, his beloved Aunt May is suffering from it as well, so he must choose between saving her or the rest of the city. He ultimately saves the lives of the many over the one, but the question is, could you do the same? When facing the impossible, can you make the hard choice? More importantly, can you make the right one? Can you do what needs to be done even if it kills you on the inside? I mean, let's just relate that to a real-life situation. A loved one is being kept alive through a machine. Do you keep them there and hope for some miracle cure? Or do you send them on to the hereafter? Life is filled with moments such as this that we never want to come, but it's in these moments that you find out who you really are. Number 8. The Sims the Sims is equal part video game and secret social experiment. This beloved franchise allows players to make and manage the lives of virtual people, pursue dreams, form relationships, and just do about anything a person can do. Basically, it lets you play God. In giving players the opportunity to essentially be God, it then asks the player what they would do with their near almighty power. But the thing about The Sims is that there are countless ways to go about each and every situation. For instance, if you wanted a nice house, you could move in with another family and just be part of their unit, or you could burn them alive in a fire and take over their estate. Just saying, those are options. If you can think of it, in The Sims, you can probably do it. You're an invisible hand controlling the lives of those oblivious to your very existence. The question this game asks you is will you use that hand to create or destroy, for benevolence or malice? What kind of god would you be? Well, the choice is up to you. Number 7. Control The word trippy doesn't even come close to covering just how strange Control is. In search for her missing brother, protagonist Jesse unknowingly becomes the chairman for a secret government agency called the Federal Bureau of Control. The Bureau is in charge of investigating and researching possible supernatural phenomena, usually in the form of seemingly everyday objects not of this world. Like many games on this list, Control deals with a ton of philosophical and existential themes. There is, however, one connective line that runs between all of them, that being how everything is more than meets the eye. Reality, and all that constructs it, cannot be seen in just one way. There is no single truth to the world that we live in, and any attempt to find said truth will likely lead to more questions than answers. What is reality? Does it exist to begin with? Or is what we call reality only an attempt to make sense of the senseless? Control engulfs you in a sea of extreme weirdness and, by doing so, infects your mind with so many questions that it would make Albert Einstein's head explode. Number 6. Bioshock Infinite Ooh, This one is a bit of a doozy. In Bioshock Infinite, you control Booker DeWitt who must invade the flying city of Columbia to find a mysterious girl in order to, air quotes, clear his debts. Throughout the game, you come to learn that the mission is far more complicated than being just 
just a simple matter of paying back what is due. According to the multiverse theory, which is a major part of Bioshock Infinite, there are countless alternate realities for every possible scenario. Every little choice that we make or don't creates a branching timeline of its own. It's hard to even know where to start when it comes to all the questions that this brings up. Do realities exist when there are versions of us who embody the best that we can become, or indeed the worst? Are there worlds where everything just went right or where everything just went wrong? What is our place within this multi-cosmic scale? Is there an origin universe that this all stems from? And can we even know? You could literally drive yourself crazy just thinking about it. Number 5. PT The tragedy of what could have been with Silent Hill still stings even now, but at least we got one hell of a game out of it with PT. You play as Norman Reedus's unknown protagonist as he walks down the endlessly looping corridors of his house. The familiar setting grows more and more distorted with each new cycle as a result of his fractured psyche, eventually turning into an absolute nightmare. Now, not to sound nihilistic, but isn't life kind of like this? One long journey that changes depending on who we are and what we've done? Existence is shaped by our individual experience and identity, causing it to be either heaven or hell of our own making. This is a theme found in the Silent Hill series as well, yet with PT, it's never been more intimate. By having the game take place in such a claustrophobic location, and by putting us directly behind the eyes of Norman Reedus's character, it makes everything that much more personal. The horror here isn't actually the vengeful spirit of Lisa or the deformed baby in the sink, but rather us and the worlds that we create for ourselves, a horror much more real than we'd like to think. Number 4. Almost any RPG ever If there's one genre that can be boiled down to a single theme, it would be RPGs. Mass Effect, Fallout, Dragon Age, The Outer Worlds, The Elder Scrolls, Undertale, Vampire, as different as all of these games are, they all ask the player the same central question, and that is, who do you want to be? Take Vampire, for example. You can do your duty as a doctor and try to cure the vampire virus that is plaguing humanity, or you can embrace the demon within and terrorize both the living and the dead. The same principle applies to a majority of RPGs. What the genre does more than any other is allow you to be the hero, the villain, or anything in between. The opportunity to escape to a different place and be a different person is a huge reason that people play video games. But escapism isn't as simple a concept as we make it out to be. Rather, when we escape into another person, it's a reflection of who we desire to be deep down inside, sometimes at least. It's not just a matter of who you want to be in the game, but also in the real world too. So once again, you have to ask yourself, who do you want to be? Number 3. Hotline Miami this neon-drenched masterpiece does not screw around when it comes to asking the hard questions. The player controls Jacket as he takes assassination missions from his mysterious animal masked employers. Most of the levels in the game are completed through repetition. The more you try and fail, the more the key to success gets wired into your muscle memory. The question is, why keep at it? There's no real reward besides a feeling of accomplishment that doesn't come close to making up for all of that frustration, right? So why do you keep going? Is it because you're told to, that you want to? Does it simply just make you feel good? What Hotline Miami is really doing under the surface is asking you why you're so determined to indulge in such brutal violence. Like the previous entry mentioned, escapism is often a reflection of the self. It may just be a game, but something inside us keeps wanting to play despite the extreme difficulty. Is there a primal desire for violence buried somewhere inside our nature? Are we nothing more than animals wearing masks of civility? This question like this that can definitely keep a person up at night. Number 2. Bioshock Now, I mentioned Bioshock Infinite earlier, and rightly so, considering just how much depth there is to that game. However, as far as philosophical video games go, few deliver as much as the original Bioshock. Bioshock puts you in the shoes of Jack, the sole survivor of a plane crash who must traverse the dangerous depths of the underwater city known as Rapture in order to get back to the surface. Along the way, he learns startling truths that shake his entire world to its core. Next to its critique of Ayn Rand's ultra-conservative philosophy of objectivism, Bioshock focuses on the age-old question of free will versus determinism. Do we govern our own actions and ultimately our own fate? Are we just following the same internal programming inside our brains implanted by our makers? Is there a cosmic script that we're unknowingly playing into, only giving us the illusion of control? These questions and the idea of the subject as a whole have been plaguing humanity since day one. The way Bioshock stares you right in your eye and asks you if you are an autonomous person or a self-deluded puppet is what made it the legend we all know it to be. And number one, it's Spec Ops The Line. An entire book could be written about Spec Ops The Line. 
So for the sake of brevity, we'll be focusing on how it handles the theme of morality. The game follows a trio of soldiers in Dubai tasked with taking down a rogue military commander. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, wrong. A major criticism of games that try to make you feel bad for virtual murder is that they tend not to offer any alternative. What makes Spec Ops The Line different is that it knows that sometimes you just don't have a choice or that every choice is equally terrible. At first glance, it may be asking you why killing non-real people makes you feel guilty, but it goes much deeper than that. Rather, what it's asking is why do we still feel guilty even if we're forced to do something wrong? If we have no say in the matter, then logically we shouldn't feel bad, right? Yet we still do. It takes this idea and draws it out to its furthest extreme, forcing you to question the actions that you've taken in life and what they say about you. Are you a good person? Can we be actually good in this world? Or is good nothing more than just a word we use to help ourselves sleep? And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 video games that pose extremely deep questions. Now, usually at this point, I'd say I hope you enjoyed that, but I think that enjoyment might be the wrong word. I hope you got something out of it. I'm not here to bum you out, by the way, at all with all of these questions. I'm here just to provide a bit of entertainment, but it is good sometimes to take a step back and take a look at the world around you and your place within it. And start asking questions like, are you a good person? Are you doing the right thing? Are you making sure that you're going out there and living your best life? Because at the end of the day, that's actually all I want for you. I don't want you to sit there in the same repetitive state over and over again, grinding yourself down or being ground down by others, because you deserve much more than that. You are a good person. As I said before, I believe that good exists in the world and that you are a part of that. You are a massive legend. You deserve love, happiness, and success, all of the best things in life. And I want you to go out there and absolutely smash it today. Make those goals happen for yourself. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.